Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week we will be talking about Tab 2 project updates, a new arcade core, an awesome groovy Mr. update, and more. Also, check out my channel sponsor Mr. Add-ons, a place where you can get all your Mr. needs. Things like full Mr. setups, I.O. boards, accessories, and more. Now let's get to the news. Tom Wilsey is creating an official mascot for the Tab 2 project and you can see a sketch of the character on the post by Tom. The name of the mascot is Taparu, and I've looked forward to seeing it being branded on Tap2 related projects. Andrea Bogazzi also updated the Tap2 designer with a modal for the print options. It now supports optional crop marks, and work is being done to add some kind of support for automated cutters. The crop marks should make it easier to cut out the NFC labels you print out. Aitor Gomez Garcia also updated his fork of Mr. Main with Tap2 integration. The new feature is the ability to load games with a system logo. If you want this version of Main to automatically get updated on your setup, you can follow the instructions on the Twitter post. It also looks like there are plans to merge these Tap2 changes to the official Mr. Main repository. Aitor mentioned that he's made changes to the main fork for better maintenance and future merging with the original repository. Moto Module, who brought us the Game Boy MIDI core that lets you plug in MIDI instruments and create music using the Game Boy's audio hardware, seems to be creating a MIDI core for the Capcom CPS2 hardware. This will let you create more realistic and complex chiptune arrangements. There is a song that Moto Module created with a Mr. FPGA using CPS2 MIDI that you can check out on X. And if you visit Moto Module's X page, you can see other posts demonstrating the core. It's unclear if it will be released publicly, and if so, when. If you have an oscilloscope, you can now make the Vectrex core more accurate. Yokipo on GitHub forked the Vectrex core to output XYZ signals out of the VGA port of the Mr. FPGA. These signals are compatible with an oscilloscope. If you want to do this, it does require a circuit to be created that plugs into the VGA port and gives you BNC connectors. Regular CRTs and modern televisions can't accurately create the sharp lines that vector monitors output. So using an oscilloscope seems like a great way to get that authentic look. Hopefully these changes can also be implemented in other Mr. Cores that are based on vector games. Last week, we got support for the arcade game Galaga 88 for the JT House Core, which runs Namco System 1 games. This week, another System 1 arcade game was added. Now there is support for Pac-Mania, a 3D variation of the classic arcade game Pac-Man. This plays just like the original game, but with the added ability of jumping. This core is currently in beta. Otego also implemented more fixes to the JT House and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles core in preparation for public releases. On Patreon, Otego talks more about the sound issues with arcade games and the research that's being done. It's a really good read that also talks about some erroneous programming Namco may have done when developing System 1 games. Robert Pipe, who has done so much work for the Mr. FPGA, most recently developing the Nintendo 64 core, is now closing his Patreon. When met with options on a new core to work on, he said there is currently no system that motivates him. I think it's a good decision on his part because it's more important to work on something that you have passion for. He does have some future plans that do not involve core development, but instead involves game development. He says that he will still work on his current cores and eventually work on future cores with the more powerful FPGAs coming. However, that won't be anytime soon. Robert also officially released a Nintendo 64 core to the Mr. Project, so now you can just update your Mr. using the normal process to obtain the core. I just want to personally thank Robert for all the work he's done for Mr. He's taken on several difficult tasks like implementing save states, developing the PlayStation N64 cores, and more. So I look forward to what he creates regarding game development and any future endeavors he may have. Groovy Mr. has had a really important update. It can now support controller inputs from the Mr. FPGA when using MAME and Mednofen. Previously, when using Groovy Mr., in order to control the games, you had to have your controller connected to the PC that was streaming the games. With this update, you can now use controllers that are plugged in directly to the Mr. FPGA. It's a really nice quality of life improvement. For those of you that don't know, Groovy Mr. is a core that acts as a network GPU 
that allows you to use specific builds of emulators on PCs and stream the games directly to your Mr. FPGA that's connected to a CRT. You may think doing this will give you a lot of lag, but in my testing, streaming the games to the Mr. FPGA using Groovy Mr. was actually faster than playing them natively on the PC, though the results can vary depending on your monitor, PC, and network congestion. Groovy Mr. makes a great companion for Mr. FPGA owners to allow them to play games that are not yet supported or will never be supported on the Mr. FPGA to a CRT. A new version of Amiga Vision was released. Updates include setting 28 MHz as the default clock. Now, thanks to some Mr. FPGA updates, 543 PAL games that were set to 60 Hz are back to running at PAL speeds. Though you still have the option to run them at 60 Hz by using the Force NTSC option. Some of the best demos from Revision 2024 are now part of the package. There have also been some updates to current games. We are also reminded that the Top 2 Project and Super Attract Mode has added support for Amiga Vision. The post on the Mr. FPGA forums lists even more updates, so check it out if you want the full details. The Amiga Vision team reminds that, that besides the saves.hdf file, you should always replace all files and INI settings when upgrading but you should still back up your existing files if you have custom settings and reapply them once everything is working. So that's it for this episode. I provide links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in block form and to get more retro related content. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and it's bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.